It's been two weeks since IFT3, and now I'm looking back and reflecting on the booster landing attempt and wondering to myself, when could we possibly see a booster catch attempt? Now I know, I know, I know. The landing was far from perfect. White literally was still very much in the testing phase. But knowing how SpaceX works, it will probably take only like one or two more test flights for it to be nailed. Maybe three. At max three, I feel. But I would say one or two. So with that being said, what are the big concerns with a booster catch attempt? And what do I think went wrong with the current IFT3? Let's run down and go over on IFT3. IFT3, well, everything was flawless on the booster on ascent as it was on IFT2. This time it actually performed the boost back burn to 100% success. At the end of the boost back burn shutdown, it did seem to be unsynchronized on one side of the shutdown, but we don't know if that is off nominal or nominal yet. SpaceX has not confirmed. We started going into the entry phase. This thing was coming down pretty quick over 4,000 kilometers per hour, so it was it was around twice as fast as the Falcon 9. The grid fins were trying to keep their best of keeping this thing out of a spin, but you know, this thing of course rotating quite violently. Even if it was spinning all the way down like that CRS mission, it would have been fine enough, probably slow down, but we don't know. But it was going back and forth a lot, so that could have been an issue later on with the lighting. Lighting up the engines, well, Three tried to ignite, one failed, and then another one failed, and then one was on failing, going and uh, you know, everything was going way downhill, and it's into the water at 1100 kilometers per hour. Not the best, but definitely a way better than IFT2 in any pass attempt. Now, I feel like it's going to uh, take probably one or two more for it to be... Oh, nice little soft water landing. I feel like next time it's gonna be a few more engines coming on, if not like half that what's supposed to, and it slows down a good margin, but still very much a hard landing. We'll have to see how that goes. That's my prediction for like IFT4, but that's a whole nother video of talking about what you should expect for IFT4. So it could be a mixture with IFT3 that we had a propellant issue, you know, just not overall enough propellant, or it was a pressurization issue or fuel sloshing issue. I think it probably is more of a pressurization issue, if I were to guess. Now, this is all guessing. It's a guessing game because SpaceX hasn't confirmed anything, but it's a possibility, especially after engines are going engine rich and only three attempted ignition, but it could be several other things. With that, that being said, let's move on to the launch pad. That's where most of the concern lies with the booster catch. With the booster catch, the launch pad is under the gun. If there is any anomaly with the booster when it's over the pad, it will likely shred off the arms, especially if it's over the arms and coming down and, you know, just everything fails. Smallest amount of major damage, and what I mean is like a major component being destroyed, but it's like only that singular component is probably the chopstick arms or the mechazilla which elon has reference to farewell arms could happen a few times i mean to be fair spacex could easily rebuild them as they have but it's not recommended that we have to replace the arms almost every single catch attempt it's definitely going to take a little while to reinstall the arms depending on how much is damaged with that being said that's not the only thing that is just a little concerning. There is multitudes of paths that this booster could go towards the chopsticks. Currently, most people think it's gonna go from the coastline, drift over, over one of the chopsticks arms into the catching area. There's the other way that it goes over the tank farm, which wouldn't be probably the smartest idea. Going over the tank farm, a little risky, but it gives you a clear shot of lining up with the arms, but I just don't think it's worth the risk. Yes, the other way you might toast the arms a little bit on the way down, but you just put shielding on the arms. And they are going to put shielding on the arms. It is in the plans. But if this thing's going over the tank farm, that would... If it fell, like if it, a raptor was failing, if it was over the tank farm, if, an, if like two gave out that thing is going on top of the tank farm and causing a nuclear bomb size explosion okay maybe not that much but pretty close it would definitely be um a mushroom cloud at the launch pad and god forbid what the 
situation would be like there. Not good. Not good at all. It wouldn't be a good day. And th that would be a major setback. But there is one thing I forgot to say is that if that happens, well, SpaceX well, would have to fix the tower. But here's the thing. They will be building a second tower that will hopefully be operational by then. Or close to operational. And then they just hurry up and get that one fully operational. If that the other pad completely got obliterated or severely damaged. Along with that, the other ones, Tang Farm, can survive. You know? Be good. Worst case scenario. And I think it's going to happen when the second tower is fully constructed. Which I feel like is like 2025. IFT, if it's called IFT, still at that point, integrated flight test, 8 plus. If not, a little later on, more like IFT 10. At that point, it's just going to be called a Starship launch. Like, it could be a Starlink or it could be some other satellite. We don't know. It's definitely somewhat concerning if they went for it without the tower built. That is just a big red flag and unless they're fully confident a hundred percent oh yes this thing is gonna make it not worth it and also going over the water is not it's close it's similar to that land trajectory but landing on a precise target already at, with a falcon 9 is not quite there it has a little bit of wiggle room starship has to do that or very close. It has a margin. And it can hover, unlike Falcon, but it only has so much time to hover before the propellant is out. So this is all things to keep in mind for how complex this vehicle is. And it's very clear that SpaceX will be pushing to get this technology, this whole entire operation done as soon as humanly possible but it's going to take a probably another year or two and then we don't even want to talk about the ship catching because that's a whole nother thing but that's my current thoughts on it i think it's going to land in 2025 somewhere around that timeline so we'll have to wait and see if you guys have any theories any comments or anything you would want to share down in the comment section down below. Feel free to put them down there. Until next time, this is your social media supervisor for Interstellar Gateway signing off. And remember, stay here for more updates.